guys. Good evening. Uh, thanks for being here. Uh, my name is Manoj. Uh, I'm a product manager at uh, JustPay Technologies. Uh, JustPay is a payment operating system, uh, payments technology platform that uh, helps businesses solve user experience and conversion rate problems in while processing payments. And for those of you who don't understand that, uh, whenever you have transacted in some uh, mobile application, you would have come across a blue rotating logo. Uh, you might be thinking what it does, but uh, just related with that, that's what JustPay is. Uh, I'm here to uh, uh, talk about uh, not only uh, what uh, we have done, uh, but to give a per perspective of uh, what we are going to do. So JustPay is a company that builds uh, transaction applications. So we have done a lot, and uh, we are going to do a lot, and that's what uh, the top talk is going to be about. Uh, FinTech uh, is moving more uh, towards uh, open systems. And uh, as this evolution is happening in the world, uh, the decision-making power uh, shifts from the business stakeholders towards the participatory communities. So the participatory communities here are the developers who are the creators and also the sellers and the buyers of the products. Uh, why so uh, that FinTech is moving towards open systems? Uh, we all know the internet is there, the whole world is one large uh, community in itself. And uh, the culture has slowly been evolving uh, towards creating a very inclusive and uh, uh, safety for all uh, type of a setup, right? And uh, that's now that's very high bar to uh, make something that is very inclusive and safety from day one, right? Uh, only open system products which have that kind of a foundational thinking. Uh, from day one, which thinks about inclusiveness uh, and safety can kind of achieve this sort of a high bar. And that's the reason why we think that uh, FinTech is also something that would uh, become more and more uh, open source centric in the future. So what has uh, JustPay's journey been with this uh, sort of uh, understanding, right? Uh, JustPay is a nine year old company. I mean. Uh, 10 years uh, this August. So uh, our journey in uh, open systems has been uh, quite a thing that we have done. Uh, it all started in early 2016 uh, when we wanted to build a, a user experience product which has to be a lightweight SDK and uh, some of our engineers started building a, a React Native equivalent which is uh, 35 KB in size because the need was to put our SDK into uh, uh, ma majority of the apps out there and it has to be like really really small in size and it has to be cross platform so uh, we call it the DUI this is something that has been open sourced uh, from there the journey started just was one of the key contributors in um, uh, the UPI specifications uh, working closely with NPCI and we were the ones who built the B map uh, which was built in over three weeks. That was something that happened in 2016. And uh, that was the time we felt that building transactional apps is, is so hard and uh, we have to do a lot of um, arm twisting and fighting against uh, programming models that is, that is not really allowing somebody to do very natural business logic, but there is a lot of other problems to solve and hence we uh, adopted a, a niche but a, a more fundamental technology. We, we, we anchored ourselves on fun, fun, uh, functional programming. And uh, that's how Presto was born. So Presto is basically our in-house framework uh, using which we build uh, front-end applications, back-end applications, and it gives a lot more benefit to us. So from there on, uh, Presto was is also something that we have open sourced. Uh, however, it's being used largely by a in-house uh, community. So it's been a long journey since then and uh, in uh, 2022 where we stand is uh, all our systems that process roughly 30 million transactions per day uh, run on this particular framework that we had created. It runs at scale and uh, it, it, has, it has massive adoptions in the product that all of us are using on a, on a daily basis. And uh, what next is uh, something that I would like to 
uh, discuss at the end of the presentation. So uh, we are going to take some very large bets uh, in building products uh, that are going to be fully open source on day one. Because until now, our uh, strategy has been uh, solving problems that we felt as problem, and we also made it available for the uh, larger community by putting it out. So uh, over these years, right, uh, uh, at Jaspe, we have, we have uh, been mostly inspired by those technologies that are, that are very fundamental in nature, also niche uh, in terms of communities. So it's about we have invested more in Haskell, uh, pure script, and uh, functional programming concepts as we built Presto. Uh, and it took a lot of years in order to polish these concepts to actually take it to production level. And uh, we, have, we have really been inspired by these people who have contributed towards these technologies. And uh, to confidently say, uh, now we stand in 2022, we have kind of extracted a lot of, lot of benefit out of all these investments. Uh, productivity, scale, uh, democratizing. Now, these are some cliche words that is being used everywhere. But uh, to be very specific, we have democratized the entire creation process of applications. So, so at, at JustPay, it's, it's not only developers that who code and uh, maintain the code, but, it's, but the, it's even product folks, it's even product folks and uh, designers who can understand code, who can, who can read through code and find bugs. Because the transactional application can be written more like a mathematical equation or like English, right? It's so understandable. So the entire creation process democratized among teams. Uh, people work together. They have a common language in which they speak. And uh, they they just don't uh, diversify themselves. They, they, they all converge together on things and get things done more faster and in a more productive manner. And uh, PureScript was, as it says, it's a set of magical components that helped to achieve what we want to do. So it has, it has really helped a lot, right? Uh, when I say product managers can read and write and understand code, like DSL is the term that we use. It's domain-specific language. So the spec itself is as close to the code as possible so that translating it into an application is, is not very much of a far away goal. And uh, the front end and back end is so closely unified because it's a single framework, it's a single language that works across both systems. There is no need for different teams. There is no need for unnecessary meetings, divergence that needs to happen. Uh, high reliability, that is a strongly typed system. The compiler does most of the job. So something that compiles is as good as it can run on production. So that is how we have been able to keep up with the fast evolving pace of uh, uh, payment methods and payment systems in India, right? Uh, it's fast evolving and we have to keep up to the pace in order to keep things moving. And uh, of course, the code is unified uh, across all three platforms and there is no need for multiple UI teams to sit and maintain code and kind of break their heads on top of it. So so a single framework has helped us achieve all of this and uh, it's, it's, it's running at uh, a very uh, impressive scale, I would say. Uh, our payments SDK has close to 1.3 billion plus installs. Uh, most of the apps that you use today in, in your day-to-day -day life has just pay SDK in it in some form or the other. Uh, we have a UPI uh, SDK product, so basically some of the some of the big brands uh, like Amazon, Google uh, in India, when you are able to register yourself in the app for making UPI payments or when you're actually doing UPI payments, uh, it's just pay SDK and the backend which which actually comes into place and processes those transactions. So we have built uh, deeper partnerships with the banks in order to kind of uh, offer these products to these uh, uh, leading brands in India. And uh, of course, we have our API unification layer, which is, which is a highly reliable system. It is the summation of uh, all the uh, load that is being processed by all the payment processors in the country, or at least most of it. Uh, it has to be so reliable because any transaction would hit just pay before it is getting diverted into any payment process. So it has to be that performant enough and uh, that scalable enough to uh, actually have its uh, standing out there. So this has been our uh, journey in usage of open source tools. We have kind of found those niche tools inspired by their concepts and we have put them to real production use. Uh, we have also done a lot of uh, uh, contribution and uh, knowledge support uh, in, in a lot of open systems out there. Now, uh, let's take UPI for example. It's not an open system, but it's more uh, like 
it has a different degree of openness in it, right? So uh, it, it, it opened up payments for everybody in India, the bank to bank pay payments happen very easily. So this was in early 2016 when Jaspay was one of the key contributors to the specs. We built the BMAP app and even any UPA app when you enter that pin, which is a four digit or a six digit number, the, the part of that, um, uh, the SDK which accepts that pin, right, that was initially built by Jaspay. So it basically run inside any app that wants to process UPA payments. It was built by our engineers. Uh, Beckon is uh, another interesting product. It is uh, uh, an interesting way of how uh, commerce is decentralized. Uh, it's, it's a set of protocol for uh, consumers and providers to uh, talk in a, in a very uh, different style. Uh, Beckon itself is an open source uh, uh, product. And uh, we have been knowledge contributors to it. And uh, Beckon needs network participants on top of it, right? So we have helped uh, consolidate the mobility related specs for Beckon. And we have built a mobility app uh, on top of Beckon protocol. It's called the Yatri, and it runs uh, in, in Kochi. Uh, the app is also open sourced. And uh, it is project named Atlas, and it's found in our GitHub page. It was something that was recently done. And we, uh, we have also uh, been a key contributor to open credit enablement network, which is uh, how it is an open protocol, how uh, lenders connect with uh, small and medium businesses uh, to evaluate their credit and provide credit to them, mostly working capital credit. So here also, uh, there was this Gemsahai app, which, is, which you might find on the Play Store. We built the critical components of it. And all of this was done using our Presto framework on one side. So uh, this is what it is. Uh, we have been uh, using a lot of open source tools, and uh, we have been uh, also been a contributor and supporter of things. Uh, so what, if you might ask? Uh, we are going to take uh, much larger bets going forward uh, from, from this year onwards. Uh, we are going to uh, make open core as a core product strategy for some of our products and uh, build on top of it. Uh, so there are two such initiatives which I would like to announce. Uh, number one is uh, what we discussed uh, earlier. So there is a backend protocol and uh, it works for mobility, it works for healthcare, it works for a lot of things. Backend itself is open sourced as I said. So uh, we have built the mobility application on top of backend and uh, we have uh, published it on GitHub, and we are looking forward to build more use cases on it, uh, scale it across multiple cities, so that uh, anybody who wants to ent enter into a consumer provider relationship for uh, ride hailing kind of application can make use of it. Uh, so this is one. And uh, the other investment that we are going to do uh, in an in a open core product strategy is to build a financial switch. So you may ask what a financial switch is. Uh, so payments always have had this developer experience problem. A lot of people talk about it. A lot of people have solved it. So it is solved already. Any developer out there has an easy way to kind of take something quickly, put it on his app, and payments run just like that. So it's a solved problem as developer experience. Uh, but what's something that is not really talked about is while solving this developer experience, too many layers get added on top of already uh, existing legacy or core systems of banks. And uh, these layers uh, leads to a lot of incremental cost, makes accessibility a, a burden, and there is a poor reliability, security, maintainability. Nobody talks about it. So we have seen that happening with our merchants, our enterprise type of merchants. We want to put in that long-term perspective, uh, unify all the payment methods uh, across the world, and uh, offer it as a highly performant, and a, and a highly reliable, uh, secure layer for our merchants. So this is our vision to build an open, fast, cost-effective financial switch, uh, which can make payment accessible, cheap, and free for all. And uh, wherever possible, like we invested in UPI in India, so we want to help merchants directly connect to the source so that there is, there is no uh, side effects of reliability or increasing cost when they want to process payments. So broadly, just to touch upon, uh, uh, last 
last few seconds. So uh, the design principles that we are going to follow that the core of the product is going to be open source. It's going to be built using Rust because it's a systems programming language. That's a choice. And uh, building for high performance from day one, thinking of security, inclusiveness, everything going into it. So uh, if you are interested by this, what we are looking for is engineers who can spread their wings, who can be a part of the founding community of these two interesting initiatives, uh, who can think like creators, sellers, buyers. Uh, please drop in a mail at careers.jaspay.in. Our uh, engineering team, which built all these products, are sitting out here. They are happy to take any questions out there as well. Or uh, as you feel, do you have time for questions? OK, cool. Uh, one question. So the question, uh, it is, uh, what you said is true. Documentation is uh, something that somebody might find difficult during early adoption of FP, uh, which is something that we also felt. And uh, the other challenges were, of course, uh, in uh, hiring, I would say, because you want to build a, build a large system or move an existing system from uh, its, its legacy version into functional programming. So that would also be another challenge. And another thing that we faced when we did this whole uh, movement to functional programming was there was there wasn't like readily available frameworks that we can pick up and use just like that to build transactional apps. So uh, our engineers, our awesome engineers, are sitting out there. So they were the ones who who went deep into things, figured things out, and actually put them out as repositories out there on GitHub, which can be uh, really used. So what we are using on our applications is something that we have put it out there. So. Uh, would be great to have contributions and comments in terms of improving the documentation that we have made so that uh, it can it can help others also to do better thanks